Testing, one, two. Hey guys, it's Aaron Grenet here from Defy Reality Entertainment. And today, I'm going to be going through some Photoshop work. And also showing a bit of Visionaire work at, at the same time. I'm going to be showing you how I've come up with a really cool new technique of being able to show the player what is on the other side of a portal within the game. Um, I call it the open state, um, like the open portal. Um, and it's a really cool technique. I randomly came about um, when I was messing around with some images the other night. I was putting some stuff into Visionaire. And I thought of this idea of the image of like what is going to be on the other side of the portal being overlaid within the image of the 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 eye portal like the one you can see here and so I kind of just sort of tinkered about with it in my head and um, had my bath in the evening and just went straight onto the computer pretty much in that that night and kind of put together this kind of um, it was like a test of blend of, of um, uh, embedding the image on top, erasing everything on the outside, blending it in, transparency, opacity, um, effects. I came up with something pretty cool, but then I also kind of pushed it even further. I think it was the next day, and so I'm going to run through the the steps I take to create this particular effect. Now it is quite a new effect as well. It's quite a new technique. It might be that I kind of broaden it a bit more throughout the game, but I'm pretty happy with it. And even with the extra push that I did the other day, compared to what I'm about to show you here, um, that really kind of took it in a, in a better position and really strengthened the effect. So I'm just gonna show you a quick example. Uh, so we're gonna run it on the scene. I'm actually just going to go straight through. So this is what um, this is what I'm going to create today. I'm going to actually create the transition from this portal into the next scene. Um, at the moment, I've got these portals to just basically have this effect to go to the other side. It's just a quick tunnel effect that you know Visionaire has um, as a nice transition effect. That you know, I just thought that'd be a cool substitute. I mean, you can see over here there's another portal that the player can go through and yeah I don't want to give too much away but um, so if I step forward a bit more and turn around you've got this portal behind you you can approach it and when you do approach it this happens so you've got this cool window now into the next scene um, and it worked out quite nicely I think if you turn around you can actually still, still see it's there um, the idea is that these portals react to sensors, so there's no lever, there's no button needed. You can just transition through. And I think, you know, if I click now, it might still have the tunnel effect. Really, it should have something, you know, really effective to now transition you through that portal. And that's actually in development at the moment. I'm in talks with that, um, with my publisher. And um, so, yeah, that's something that's going to be developed over the next little while. As some kind of particle effect that will fill the screen and you know it will be a very very quick effect very fast effect because I don't want the player to be waiting there forever it needs to be nice and fast snappy and effective and then they just arrive in this area here as the portal open portal showed um, so yeah I mean I can move forward here I can turn around I can go back on myself and at the moment it's just a it's just a tunnel effect so um, it opens up again I can turn around it's still open moving away should have some sort of sound as well because it closes go back so that sound effect there I created myself um, I can't remember how I created it I'm not too sure if it was a if it was something from freesound.org um, or if it was something I created myself but I basically edited it to have a particular sound that was actually used in the Flitsu Island walkway test build from last year and when the player clicks on the force field and um, that's the sound and you know that is still going to happen I don't know if I'll be using that same sound or if I'll be using this sound for this particular portal I'm not too sure but um, it's a cool substitute sound um, actually sidetracking a bit that particular force field I'll link the video to that test build here as well so you can watch it 
But um, it'll be cool to have some kind of ripple effect when the player does click on it. So it's a very, it actually feels like you're reacting with the portal. Um, it probably won't be sensitive enough to actually react to anywhere you click, but at least you know with that click, it kind of ripples from the middle. Again, with this effect here, I'm going to look at um, having a, a particle effect that reacts to whereabouts. You know, not so much whereabouts the player will click, because I think that's just going to be really. Um, it could be quite a hard thing to uh, get right um, to actually have in the game. But at least with a click around this area here, most likely, um, I might even actually, yeah, I'm going to actually fine-tune fine the hotspot for the forward to have it so that it's actually right around the, the edge of this portal. And so the effect should just come at least from the middle, and so it feels like you're, it's actually reacting to your click, you know, so it's going to be... It kind of rushes out from the, the from the center, and then envelops the entire screen, and then you know you go through and you arrive in the place that the portal shows you. So I think it's a really cool, cool idea to have like a little window that opens up, and you can actually see inside. Um, again, you've just transported yourself into the next place. So really, it should open up at this point. It shouldn't be open. Um, that's the idea anyway, only when you approach the portal from the front should it open up, so that's something I'll be changing anyway. So yeah. But one thing I want to run through today is how I created the effect, but also the changes I've done to make it a bit, to look a bit even better than it is there. The main thing is to focus on the coloration of what the portal as it stands anyway. So you've got the nice fiery blue kind of electrical look. Um, it's kind of keeping that within the image. Um, but I actually made it a lot clearer so you can actually see more of the image and a bit more of like how it's going to look before you kind of transport yourself through. Almost as if it's it's there. It's literally right there on the other side even though it doesn't exist within this area that you're in here because this is a completely different um, maybe a quick little snippet here of the actual game you know it doesn't exist on the other side of this water you know so um, yeah it's it's basically a really cool effect to have it quite clear as if it does exist but it doesn't so okay so basically I need to now embed the images that show the player where they'll be transporting themselves to once they click on the portal and travel through it. So we've got two images here that we're going to be working on. I actually need to get rid of this image because this is a raw render. Uh, this is not... Actually, I might as well quickly show you a little kind of... Uh, uh, the way the um, Photoshop action lists work on these images. Um, I've created a video for that already. I'll actually link that to this video as well, which goes into a bit more detail about how I create the effects in Photoshop and how they bring life to the um, the images of Nier and the, the world of Nier in general. So this action list here, I've just got classed as um, where is it? The Felicity Island Dome Exteriors. Um, I actually need to double check that because this is the elevator bridge of the dome zone. Yes, so this is this dome. Okay, so I can now click on that, and I'll add my effects. And so everything's more blue. You've got that really nice kind of light now. It's a lot more sort of fierce coming, glowing out of the portal, which is quite cool. Um, so now we're transporting ourselves from here to here. So what we'll do, I'm actually going to just close that one for now and bring in the actual render itself. That'd be dome, craft. And again, I mean, as I was showing you before, this is the actual image that was in the that's in the Visionaire engine at the moment in the build. Um, that's the one I did, you know, a couple or so days ago now, um, and that was taken from the original, which was this one here. Okay, so this one here is the uh, the Harbour Zone Dome Portal Walkway, um, and then it transitions to what's called the Dome Zone Elevator Bridge. So it, it goes, you know you're going from one zone to the other 
This is going to be going into the harbour zone, and this one's going to be going into the dome zone. Not going to give too much more away there, but that's basically what's happening. And there's a few of these in the game. Um, so what I'm going to do now is that actually I'm, I'm going to start off with the this harbour one. So this is going to go into the dome zone. The dome zone. And this is how it starts. I'm just going to place an, an image that will be the image that the player will see when they transition through. The next location basically. So we need to go to this one. So this is the place that the player will go to once they click on this portal. Now, I mean the idea pretty much came to me very quickly that all I need to really do is embed the render on top of the render and fit it into the portal the best way possible. So it needs to be so that it fills this space. It needs to fit quite nicely into here and pretty much kind of as sort of straight as possible as well. I can actually mess around with the opacity um, whilst I'm doing this just to see where it will fit because um, you can see here how it's kind of going to look once it's set up and so yeah you just sort of set it up the best way possible so it's kind of central something like that that looks pretty good and um, you know you're not going to get it completely right but as long as the walkway here is kind of in the middle of this staircase that leads up into the portal that's pretty good uh, might make it just a bit smaller so there's a bit more of it there you go that's pretty cool that's awesome okay and again you know these effects that I'm creating here they might not be used for the final game but to be honest they serve a pretty good purpose as they are you know as they do so I'm just going to experiment with that a bit more just to see what happens in there. The thing is I don't want to mess around with this too much because it needs to fit it just needs to sort of fit there in the middle yeah, that's pretty cool we'll run with that that's pretty cool and it's going to move it just a bit more left. Awesome stuff. So another thing I need to do to uh, make this work is I need to get rid of the what's called cool, I guess the pupil of this eye portal. So taking away that layer there, that's my embedded image. I can now get rid of this pupil area here, and I can just use the um, the clone stamp tool within Photoshop, and you know. Basically with Alt I can select any part of this image and I can just paint over this. I can actually increase the size as well of the brush and just get a nice kind of effect going here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of just masks away there. There you go, perfect. Imperfect, perfect, I'm not too sure, but it looks pretty good. Um so we're just gonna bring that back in and now it's nice and clear. Um, what I'm actually going to do now, I'm going to add a darken tool, um, a darken um, effect to this layer. So what we've got now is what's more similar to what we saw in the engine here. So that's kind of using just the darken um, effect within Photoshop. Um, so we go back in here, um, we can now adjust the opacity to be whatever it needs to be. I'm actually going to keep it on 100. Um, I mean it works pretty well on 100. Uh, that's pretty cool. One thing I might do as well, I'm just going to lift up this image a bit. Yeah. Okay, so what I've done there is I've just lifted up the image just a bit so that basically we can work with no gaps like this. So the actual vendor that we're using has the image chopped off at the top there. Uh, I don't really want that to be seen so much, so I'm just going to move that up. And the bottom bit here can probably be worked with anyway, but we can move it up and down at some point um, throughout this process. So I'm going to keep it at 100. 
And what I'm going to do now is basically just erase around this image. Um, and I'm going to, I'll keep it to 40 for now, it should be fine. And basically, uh, change that. I'm just going to take away the rough area of what we don't need. I'm actually going to do it around here first. So we get an idea. This might not be the final render for the game anyway, but I'm just showing you the example. And then when I've done that, I can just solo this and get rid of all the other stuff we don't need. Goodbye, other landscape areas. And then it's a bit more polished. Obviously, we've got a bit of a gap here. That's kind of annoying. I mean, let me sort of bring that down. There you go. That's pretty cool. Because there's a bit of a fade effect now on this as well, so that works quite nicely. So we can actually just get back into our eraser and kind of erase around this area here. The great thing about the brush, the brushes, and the erase tool within Photoshop is that you can create the strengths of what you what you want within it. Um, so you can just change the you know the size. You can do all sorts of things and how much you want to erase out by the opacity so that's pretty cool and that, that will come in um, more useful uh, as this process develops as well okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate our um, window view layer of looking inside the portal I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to add, add a hard light effect to it so we'll see kind of a change now We've got all these different cool effects here just to make it. I mean, you could have these animated. Imagine that. You know, you could have that kind of thing going on. But um, the, the uh, hard light works really nicely because it kind of brings out more of the image, which is quite nice. And, you know, you can adjust this accordingly. So at the moment, it's about 100%. I might go for about 57, something like that. Just adds a bit extra kind of oomph to the image so we can take that out that's the original that's now with hard light just brings it out a bit more it's quite nice pops it a bit more whilst keeping that nice blue kind of tone to the rest of the image okay now we're going to duplicate it again we're going to duplicate this layer again and we are going to do it as normal and now we've got an even clearer image so now we've gone from having it like this to this to this and so what we've got now is a really nice kind of cool view into the portal as if that area kind of exists on the other side um, obviously it kind of doesn't make sense because the water is a lot higher up <laughs> um, than the actual horizon line of where you're looking at the portal I mean that could be something like I mentioned before how the camera angles can be very consistent looking at the portal that horizon I could even match the view within the portal. It might be that the portal will be even closer, but I actually kind of like the sort of stand back view of seeing the world around you whilst having this more, you know, sort of not too small, but just seeing that portal open up in front of you and the view inside. Um, and so that's going to be, you know, I think that works quite well anyway as it stands. But again, you could get really technical with it and look at all the different camera angles you can kind of use and then match the horizon lines of each transition image. So it really looks like you're kind of looking in to that portal and that it actually exists on the other side. So kind of defeats that, that effect a bit when you see it like that, but it still works because it isn't on the other side of the portal. And it's, it's still a cool effect. It still works quite nicely in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I will say set that to 54% um, as well, the normal layer now, um, just so it's not so sharp, um, but it kind of blends in with the other layers that are being used. So what I'll do now on this normal layer, I mean I will, you know, I could just name all these, but I kind of know which one's which anyway. I can now use my eraser tool and set the opacity to 35%. 
it'd be easier to type it when it, there you go, bing. And um, you know, I can change the size if I want it as well. And I can just run over this, the kind of the middle parts of this normal layer. I just want to run over them. And you'll see, even if I zoom in a bit more, actually, let's zoom in a bit more. So we get, you can see more of the effect happening. So I'm just going to run over this. And you can see that that coloration is just fading a bit. So I'm just going to patch it, just patch it here and there. Nice. And that's only at 35%. It's a very subtle effect, but it just kind of weathers the portal a bit, the effect that's happening. And I'm now going to go into the hard light layer, which is our second layer here. So adding that, creates that. I'm now going to use the eraser on this layer. And I've set it to 86% um, on the opacity, and also the hardness is still at 20, which it has been, I believe, for the other effects. I haven't really changed that. But anyway, you could, you know, mess around with that and, you know, see what happens. But this effect here will now kind of get rid of our hard light area. And we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to kind of go over here, take that out. Again, it kind of just weathers it a bit more. I still want some of the color to be there. I'm just going to run this down a bit so we can actually see more of the image. I kind of maybe want to go back to this one in a minute actually and sort some of that out. But then again, it's kind of cool having the walkway quite sort of prominent at the front there. Kind of gives more of the the player the feeling that they want to kind of walk on top on, onto it through the portal. So yeah, just getting rid of that, get rid of that, get some of the ocean going as well. We're going to go now to our darkened layer, the first layer we created, and we're going to set this to 31%. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, we're just going to take away these uh, areas. And now we're getting more of the actual eye portal itself, the effect of it coming out a bit more, which is quite cool. Patch up there, patch up here a bit. I mean, we could go into yeah the, on the walkway as well. It's all, doing that a bit more creates a kind of misty-ish effect kind of adds more of the misty feel of the portal itself which is quite nice around here do around the edges we're going to go around the edges in a minute anyway but it kind of just feels like it's sort of opened up a bit more so it's quite cool and if you want I mean we can go back to our normal and see what happens when we push that up a bit higher to 90 you know it kind of shows up a bit too much so we'll, we'll go back to 54 we could go to maybe 60 we've got a bit more color coming out which is quite nice maybe 80 but then you've lost the, the effect of the things that we're doing anyway with the other effects so it's kind of getting the um the balance of, of everything right but so far so good that's pretty cool i'm going to just go back to uh 60. I think it was 66. And already it's looking really clear. <laughs> but it's, it's those little um, additions of rubbing everything out, especially what I'm about to do now. So what I'm going to do is erase the edges, so then everything really kind of blends in with the, the rest of the portal. So I'm going to set this to 55 for now. And we're going to go back to our not layer here. And I'm going to set this to 100, just going to zoom in a bit more. And we're going to go around the edges here first. So that's the buccal size. And we'll just erase around here, kind of coming out into the image. Maybe a bit smaller, because we don't want it to be too blotchy. And the thing is, we don't want it to be too like, I think like that is probably a bit too much, so I'm just going to undo that. I probably just want it to be a bit further in, so maybe even about here. So we'll increase that size again. Maybe just a rim around here. Kind of creates this cool effect. I'm actually going to change this to 40. 
I'm just going to mash it in a bit more here. I'm going to go to 20 quickly. Just one that out there. Nice. And then go back to 55 if we need it. And just these bits here maybe. Okay, so now what I've done is I've gone back to our second layer and I'm going to start taking away more of that, um, more of those layers, just so that you can start seeing the edge of the portal a lot better. I've set it to 100 opacity as well on the eraser and I'm just going to run, run it around here just so we can get that nice blue, blue ring to show a bit more like that. I can now, you know, solo this and make sure that we don't have any patches as such. Come back into this. And I'm going to do the same for this layer as well. So we now should see a lot more change here. Here we go. There we go. Uh, I'm going to do that again. So I don't really want to get the... image itself but it's just that nice blue crispy portal image that I want to kind of make pop out now that looks pretty cool I'm just gonna see how that's looking yeah it's pretty awesome bring that back in and um, so we just make this a bit smaller and work on these bits here quickly. I'm gonna reduce it a bit more here to about I'm gonna go to 75. I'm just gonna run this now across this bit here so we can bring out more of the image on this side. Just maybe a bit more of that blue out of him as well completely starts to fade in and you can even do things like getting a really small and kind of painting the kind of like portal back in the actual the actual look of the closed portal you can sort of have it sort of seeping into the image but it's kind of making it look so that it's not drawn in so it's got it's got to work quite nicely again that could be just the um, uh, the actual opacity so we can bring that down and just bring that in make it a bit as hard size a bit bigger there you go it's cool so we want that kind of blue coming into the image on the sides I'm going to go into our original layer and erase where we need to as well. Make it a bit more bold in certain areas. Look at that. You've got this nice little kind of light blue kind of tinge to the actual dark blue which is quite nice. It's kind of creating that nice rim that we need. And there you go. We've got like a view now into the portal to the other side. Which... Okay guys, so we now have our new portal opened. So this is going into the harbour zone and this one is going from the harbour zone into the dome zone. So we've got two open portals here. Again, they've been rendered at different kind of angles, views. I kind of prefer the on the onlooking kind of frame here. I mean, the render's a bit too high at the top, so that will probably be done again. But these are just cool examples of just like how the renders are embedded on top of these portal images, and then to make to make they're made to look as if they've been opened up. So yeah.
I'm now going to bring these into a software called X and Convert. And this basically converts the PNGs into WebP files, which is what Visionaire works with. Um, I can compress these files really nicely, whilst also keeping the quality of the image as well. So it's really, really cool. Uh, so this would be our dome. And we're going to make sure that it goes into the right folder within our build. So I've got all my assets here. Let me go into the dome zone, elevator zone, and we're going to throw that in there. And we can now bring that into Vision Air. Okay, so now what I've done is I've copied the um, dome zone elevator walkway 1C test image, um, which is basically not going to really be a test, it's actually going to be part of the game because this is the image that basically uh, opens the portal up. So when the player goes to this image, it, um, it will change to the portal opening. But we do need to change the name of this. So I'm just going to paste that into here. And I'm just going to say close. I'm just going to call it close. It's a much better way of terming it. And this one will be open. So we just need to change those around quickly. So when you go into the harbor zone, this will be our close. And now we need to change this one to open. So we'll go into here, and that'll be our open one. So we're going to go from this image to this image. Okay, so then that will go to uh, the harbor zone. Now uh, we need to quickly find the harbor zone dome portal area. Uh, it will go to our open. So we have the sound plays, sets the effect, um, and it will just fade in to that. So we should have a cool effect now. Yay, it opens up. And again, it didn't have to be too, you can sp change the effect and how fast you want it, but actually it runs quite nice when you time as well. So uh, it's quite nice. Brilliant stuff. And what's going to happen now is that um, our 2C should go to this, the closed one. So we're going to go to forward, we're going to change these around. Let's bring these up a bit. So now we need to go to the 1C closed. At the moment it's going to open, but we need it closed because it needs to be closed before it opens up. So we take away these other images here. And again, I, I sort of go through this a bit more in my other Visionaire video, and I'll probably be, you know, um, going through this a lot more. Uh, these are the different transitions within the game, so neutral, relax, um, you've got speed as well. So it's the fastest, kind of neutral speed and a much slower speed that the player can actually explore near with. And so they have to be set with the images. Um, usually if I duplicate left, right, um, forward, whatever, and I duplicate them and just change the numbers because it's the next position, all these change automatically so I don't have to manually put them back in. But um, depending on like a, a certain change or anything like that that happens with the engine, yeah, they have to be you know double checked. And you've got my speeds here, so delay of 90, 300, and 600. So that's pretty cool. And then down here you've got no transition at all. So that's when you disable transitions, you can just click, 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 click to each image, and you can get around really quick that way as well. So um, yeah, so we've got our 2C to 1C. And that now goes to the closed. That will automatically open up. Now, 1B at the moment is not going to go to our open one. So it needs to basically, when we turn right and look back at the portal, it now needs to go to the open. So we just, um, to the open, yeah. So actually, I think it's already set. I think I'm already good to go there. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. What we do though, what we do need, I think it might already be set. Yeah, it's already set. Fantastic. 
So we can move away and approach the portal. And it opens up. We can look around. One thing that should happen is a the sound there, or, you know, it closing. But you know, we can add that at a later date. And there might not even be that particular sound anyway. So one thing I actually do want to do quickly. I want to add. Where is it? I want to add an effect that is not the tunnel effect. I want to go to a fade. We're going to go to this fade to new scene. And we'll just do that for now. We'll keep it kind of smoother. And we'll do the same for the dome as well. Um, I believe I'll be able to put that in there. Yeah, let's just test that out. Fantastic. I mean, that's cool. And we've got a tunnel effect there, so I'll change that in a minute. So yeah, what's going to happen is there's going to be a cool like particle effect that will fill up in the screen. It'll be kind of transitioning between the portals. Um, and so what I'll do quickly now is I'll quickly go into that dome elevator. I'm going to change this to close as well. And change that to open. Just to keep things quite consistent. I'll try and keep things quite consistent with the names that I give to the different scenes here on the left. So anything that's like a look up, for example, is just look up. You know, right pole, blah, blah, blah. Zoom in on left pole. And zoom in on right pole. So yeah, all those kind of things are just um, things I try and keep consistent with every image. If it's a zoom in or anything like that, um, it just keeps things nicely organized. And you can see them stand out quite nicely as well. Here, look down, look up and stuff. So um, that's pretty cool. So we'll go to here and we'll change that to a fade. I've actually got the um, the speeds there set so depending on what speed you're running the game that transition effect will match to the, the transition speed you're at. I did have an idea that if you're on um, an option in the game called journey mode uh, which I haven't really set up, I've set it up to a point in the uh, Felicity Island walkway test build last year where basically if you're going down a ladder there will be an animation of you, an FMV of you actually moving down the ladder or going up the ladder um, and you take that journey mode off um, it was called something else at the time but I've decided to go with journey mode you take that off it just basically goes straight down like and there might be a couple more images of going down the ladder so it's kind of cool like if you don't have journey mode on you'll be able to see certain views, certain vendors in the game that you wouldn't see if you had journey mode on but if you have journey mode on then you have these really cool animations so I'm thinking with these portals um, with journey mode you might have a bit more of a longer some sort of longer effect not so much with these portals but for other portals within the game there might be some kind of cool transition of you traveling through and that will only be available on journey mode so if the player does get really bored of having to wait a bit longer, you know, they can just disable journey mode, you know. So yeah, that should work quite nicely now. And take away a tunnel effect. And we're just fading into the images. Again, we've got a bit of a thing here where the portal's open still. Now I'm thinking actually instead of it being closed, it could be open as you've just passed out of it. And so if you do want to go back, you know, it kind of feels like you're going back. So I think having them open actually bef once you've passed kind of works quite nicely. For some reason there's no sound. Um, oh yeah, sorry, there's the sound of it opening. <laughs> so yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself a bit. I mean, having a sound of you going through. I've actually created these tests with a keyboard. Um, I've got a Yamaha keyboard I bought back in October last year. I've got some really cool sound effects um, going with that keyboard that have um, probably various different layers that are just going to be compiled 
on top of each other to create this really cool portal transition sound. And on top of that, with the visual particle effects of you actually passing through, yeah, it's just going to be much more... It's just going to be a much more immersive experience of you actually going through and then being able to explore the other side and stuff, so... Yeah, it's really cool. So yeah, that's my work within Photoshop, um, coming up with these cool open portal effects for the game. Um, if you like this video, definitely like and subscribe to my channel and um, stay tuned for more devlog videos coming out. Um, this year I'm looking at maybe doing at least one a week and you know it will capture various things of the game development, um, modeling, vision air work, Photoshop work, um, whatever's really happening in the time that I'm, I'm sort of de you know developing the game. Um, I mean eventually it'll be sound effects, it'll eventually it'll be music and all sorts of things. Um, I'm looking at having live action characters within the game so it'd be fantastic to get some really cool devlog videos of that on of that happening and the process and all sorts of things so yeah it's going to be quite a cool load of content that's going to be coming out showing the um, the behind the scenes of Nia so definitely subscribe to the channel and um, if you want to see like more in-depth information about this process um, maybe some extra screenshots or extra views of this particular location that I'm in within these videos then definitely head over to the Patreon page. Um, it's the best place to be for all things Nia. And there's some great rewards out there. And for like one dollar a month, you can get your name on the uh, the credits of the game as a Patreon supporter. And um, eventually, you know, in future hard copy releases of the game, I'm looking at having Patreon supporters' names within the manual as well. So that's going to be really exciting. And um, yeah, all all donations, all support really help this uh, full-time game development of Nia. So head over to the Patreon page, um, check it out. Hopefully I'll see some of you join up on there and I'll see you on the other side of that Patreon portal. Um, so that'd be really cool. And definitely wish this Nia on Steam. Um, it's going really well right now. Um, wish this the game. You know, you'll be notified when the game comes out. And... It would be fantastic just to have as many of you guys exploring Nia when it's all finished and it's a big world, it's going to be so exciting to finally be able to release this game and have you all explore this entire new world um, full of mystery and intrigue and all sorts of things happening. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and um, stay tuned for my next video next week and again look at the other videos I've released and have a lovely day, night, evening, morning, wherever you may be in the world. And I'll chat to you next week. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.